Welcome to Kramer Control Tutorials. My name is Tommy Copen, engineer at Kramer Electronics USA. In this video, we will take a walk through the driver manager section of the KCONFIG software and briefly explain all of its functions. For a more detailed explanation of pieces of the driver manager, please see later videos in the series. If you do not already have KCONFIG installed on your computer, please see a previous video in the series on how to install and use KCONFIG. Let's start the walkthrough with a quick explanation. The driver manager is the place behind the scenes where you manage your devices and the commands used to control them. With KCONFIG open, you can get to the driver manager by selecting the driver manager in the file menu or by clicking the driver manager quick link here. first screen you will see is the driver's tree. In the driver's tree, you will manage your drivers from a high level. The tree consists of three levels, manufacturers, devices, and revisions. From the driver's tree, you can create new drivers, edit driver names, and delete drivers. New drivers can be created in two ways. Drivers that have been previously created and saved onto your computer can be imported by clicking the Import Drivers button at the bottom of the screen. A new driver can also be created by clicking the Plus button. Where you are currently selected in the tree will determine whether you create a new manufacturer, a new device, or a new revision with the Plus button. Items in the tree can be renamed by clicking on the item and pressing the edit button. Any item can be deleted by clicking on the minus button. If you wish to duplicate a driver, you can click on it and press the duplicate button. Once you have created a driver, you can edit that driver by clicking the edit button in the bottom right hand corner, which will bring you to a new screen. For this example, I will choose Kramer's VP438 scaler to edit. If you would like to get back to the driver's tree at any time, click the driver's tree button. On the left hand side, under the driver details, you will find the following information about the selected driver. You will see the manufacturer name, the model number, the driver revision, the device type, and the date the revision was created. These are mostly self-explanatory except for the device type. Device type allows you to choose what kind of device this is. You can choose options like scalar, matrix, projector, monitor, etc. I will explain later what effect this device type has on the driver as a whole. Next are driver settings which contain serial settings for RS-232 control and Ethernet settings for Ethernet control. These serve as the default settings for this driver and will allow a port to be automatically configured when the driver is selected by the port manager. Of course, these are just default settings for the specific device and can be changed later on a per project basis if needed. On the right hand side, we have a list of different types of commands that could be used by the driver. We have serial commands, IR commands, serial reply commands, tables, and queries. You can expand any one of these items for more details. Commands are separated by shared commands and non-shared commands. Shared commands exist in the named categories like power, input, routing, volume, etc. And non-shared commands are all grouped together in one bunch. Shared command names are predetermined so that they will be the same for all drivers, which can allow for easy substitution of drivers in a project. Non-shared commands should be considered device specific and therefore not shared by all drivers. The shared categories that are listed for the driver depend on the device type selected. Different device types only contain their corresponding shared categories. To see what shared categories and shared commands are available for each device type, 
you can click on the Commands Hierarchy button. In this screen, you can add or customize device types or device commands to your liking. Serial commands relate both to RS-232 commands and Ethernet commands. You will notice that items that are populated are bold and items that are not bold are currently empty. Clicking on a specific command name will show the command itself. IR commands follow the same convention as serial commands, but they will be used specifically when that driver is selected for IR control. Serial replies contain the sh same shared and non-shared convention, but the commands here are what the device replies with when a command is received. Command replies allow you to use triggers like monitor events that listen for specific device replies to execute an action. Tables are serial commands organized in a way that is optimized for sequential commands such as discrete volume control. You can see in this example that this output volume table consists of 101 discrete volume levels, each which is with its own command. We will discuss tables in detail in the later video. Finally, we have queries. Queries are serial commands that ask a device a question. Depending on the answer from the device, different triggers can be executed by the controller. In the driver manager, you will define the syntax for the question and for the different possible answers. We will discuss queries in detail in a later video. Once you are finished making changes to a driver, you can save your work by clicking either the OK or Apply button in the right hand corner. If you would like to save this driver to your computer for, file, for backup purposes or to send it to a coworker, click the Export Driver button and save it. For a printable summary of your driver, Click the Create PDF Summary button and a PDF will pop up showing the details of the driver as well as all the available commands and syntax. You should now have a basic understanding of what the driver manager is all about. To learn more, please check out other videos in the Kramer Control Tutorial series. For Kramer Electronics, I'm Tom Copen. Thanks for watching.